Sup everyone, I'm your female otaku and I'm here to review chapter one of arc four of ReZero the web novel. And for those of you who maybe missed it, I already reviewed the rest of arc three. I'll leave a link to that in the description. And also in that video, I leave other links to where you need to start if you want to get into the web novel right after the anime. But anyway, enough about that. Let's talk about what happened in this first chapter of arc four. So. A lot of character interactions. Noth nothing too big really happened, but I do really like the dialogue uh, that we had in this chapter, mainly between Felis and Subaru. And I also really like the dialogue between Kush and Amelia. First, let me talk about Felis though, because Felis has been given a lot of shine lately, and I really like this. I, I want to learn more about Felis. Right now, we're getting to learn more about. Felis's personality, and we're getting hints of Felis's past, but I really want to learn more about mainly Felis's, just Felis's past, and then Felis's relationship with Kush and stuff, which we're starting to learn more and more about, but I would like, you know, more. <laughs> Felis says that Subaru's gate is damaged, you know, the gate that he uses to unleash his magic abilities, and apparently it's, it's so damaged that he cannot use it for two months or else he cannot be healed. It could be really fatal. And Subaru's just like, two months? Oh, that's fine. I can deal with that magic for two months because, you know, it's not like I've been using magic all my entire life. And then he realizes that, huh, I haven't even been here for two months. Oh my gosh, the things that's happened to Subaru in this world and it hasn't even been two months, Jesus Christ. Felis has a really great relationship with Krush. The fact that Krush says that she prefers Felis to wear women's clothes instead of men's clothes, and Felis, you know, has a very feminine looking body and stuff, and Subaru and Felis shook hands. He noticed how feminine Felis's hands were, and Felis, even though he's not the manliest of people, he still has the spirit of one. But then again, that doesn't really mean that he's manly. It just means that he's strong. Kind of like Krush, right? And Fela says that he will protect Krush with everything that he has. Body and soul has been given to Krush. And Krush, even though she has lost her memories, we still see the strong spirit, the strong personality with it. I'm so glad that that's there. The dialogue that she shared with Amelia was amazing. Because Amelia, once again, so overcome with happiness that people are sharing their true feelings about her, but not their true feelings as in like, oh, you half elf, but no. They're treating her like a person. And that just, that's amazing to see. Cruz just keeps on going at how Amelia it should stay true to herself and that she is happy that they are friends even though they are in the royal selection together. They, uh, Krush will still try her best to beat Amelia but she will never forget the friendship that they have developed and she does not want to lose that in hopes that they will become friends forever. Both Amelia and Subaru. So I'm just like, oh, my waifu, you're still there. You're still there, my wife. Oh my gosh. So I hope to see Wilhelm, Felis, and Krush again really soon, but for right now we gotta focus our time over at the mansion and give some other characters some shine. On their way over to the mansion, we see that Otto is there for the ride and Subaru is just treating Otto like an object. <laughs> Subaru just keeps on telling Otto to shut up and stuff. I think, it, I think the reason why he's doing this is not because he hates Otto, but uh, two reasons. One, he finally has power over somebody else, <laughs> and two, it, it brings him back to his old self, the comedic self. So that I think that's the, the two main reasons why he's treating Otto the way he is. Subaru is not being a dick just to be a dick. He has an interesting conversation with Amelia. Amelia points out that she can't really accept the words that Subaru tells her. For good reason, too. Because even though Subaru consistently says how much he loves her, uh, and she believes him, but she can't accept it, mainly because of how he ends all of these beautiful confessions. He ends it either with a joke or some sort of perverted line, which makes it hard for her to really accept the words. Like, she believes him, she admits that, but she just can't accept it, and she says that it'll be a while till she accepts his feelings. 
And not only that, but then he brings up of how much he loves Rem. So I can I can understand Amelia as to why she's not going to accept Subaru's words anytime soon. Because I wouldn't accept a guy like I would be so confused. I would be so confused if someone gave me that amazing love confession and then says some sort of joke or some sort of perverted line and stuff, and then says that he loves somebody else as much as he loves me. I'd be like, dude, the fuck are you trying to play at here? Like, honestly. So, I totally understand Amelia. It'll definitely take some work for Subaru to truly win Amelia's heart, but she does believe him. It's just she's not gonna get with him anytime soon. And it's only gonna be worse when Rem comes back. Subaru just loves the idea of both Rem and Amelia pulling at him, and it's just like, dude, I know Rem accepts this. Amelia, on the other hand, she does not, and I can totally understand why, but we're probably gonna dive in more with that when Rem comes back, but I know it's gonna be a while till Rem comes back. This whole entire arc is just gonna be about bringing Rem back, so... <sighs> but hey, at least Amelia gets some shine, we're gonna learn more about her. When they went over back to the village, they noticed that the majority of the villagers are missing. And they do have some villagers with them, but as they say, they only have 40% of the villagers with them, while the 60% aren't there. And, which is odd, because they were over at the capital, you know, Subaru and the gang were over at the capital for three days. And it only takes about seven to eight hours from the sanctuary to get back over to the village. So why isn't anyone there? Something must have happened over at the sanctuary. So Subaru makes his way over to the mansion and notice that the place has been completely redecorated. Everything's arranged nice and stuff, and it's just like, whoa, 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 whoa what? How come things have been arranged so nice and stuff like that. Has Ram finally developed some skills? Because <laughs> like, you know, she's not the best when it comes to cleaning and, and things like that. So it's just like, what, what happened? We know Betty couldn't have done this because she's over at the library the entire time. And then the chapter ends with a shadow engulfing Subaru, dragging him into the darkness with white fangs. So the f so let me know what you guys thought of this chapter, and basically how I'm going to start reviewing these uh, is probably review it by chapter. I, I know there's supposed to be like a ton of chapters, so I'll probably just review the web novel just by chapter. It'll make, it'll make things a lot easier instead of reviewing things by like every three parts within a chapter. That's just going to be too much. After a chapter is complete, expect a review as soon as possible. Catch me later as I review Trickster, Nanatsu no Taizai, and The Promised Neverland. I'm your female otaku, sayonara.